the Tamiya Hornet. It's basically an upgraded grasshopper. It's got better articulation on the rear axle and it also comes with a set of oil shocks at the back. But you still have to suffer with front pogo shocks. And in this video we're going to address that situation which is also applicable for the Tamiya Grasshopper. They share the same chassis and the same front setup. Now don't get me wrong, this is fun, but I'm going to show you how you can add oil shocks to the front. So grab a pen and paper, because I'm going to give you all the part numbers you're going to need. First up, you're going to need Grasshopper 2 A-arms. Secondly, you're going to need these U-brackets to mount the shocks, together with these brass tubes that you insert into the eyelet of the shock before installation. To get this to work, you're going to have to make some steering rods. I used these 5mm adjusters, together with some M3 threaded rod that I bought from eBay, dirt cheap. In order to connect your new steering rods to the servo saver, you're going to need these 5mm ball connectors, together with these 2x8mm cap screws. The shocks I installed are the Tamiya CVA Super Minis. To get these to fit properly you're going to need to use the shortest rod end in the pack. This image shows the difference between using the shorter rod end and the longer rod end length and we need to be heading for the 56mm length. I opted for the two hole piston as I found that worked best for me. Now let's take a closer look. First of all you're going to have to put your big boy pants on and remove part of the chassis. It's about to go down, man. Is you serious, man? What? But don't worry. It's dead easy and just take your time and you will not go wrong. I've already done one off camera, but this is just a demo to show you what I actually did. I used a wood chisel to take off part of the chassis on each side. This allowed me to file off a little bit at a time. This way I could check to see if everything was fitting okay. If it didn't and I got binding, I'd go back and take another bit off. If you don't own a wood chisel, don't worry about it. Find yourself a bit of timber glue on some sandpaper and use that as a file. I find this much better than using loose sandpaper in my hand because it gives you a flat edge to work with. I did use the original servo saver using these parts I listed to you at the start of the video. But if you use a high torque servo saver you may find things to be a little bit different. It is possible that you may even have less binding to start with. This will be due to the shape and the size of the servo saver. I spent a bit of time experimenting but this is the length of the steering rods that I came up with that worked well. I'll also mention that using the knuckles that came with a kit, I chose to move the ball connector in a hole. But you can experiment and see what you think is best for you. And this is how you mount the top of the shocks using those U-brackets. Now this is the benefit of using the Grasshopper 2 A-arms. The mounting point is lower down, which means we can use the 56mm length shocks. You also benefit from a wider track at the front, as these A-arms are wider than the original one supplied in the kit. I've really enjoyed the increased performance since doing this modification and as mentioned the chassis of the Grasshopper and the Horner is exactly the same. The only difference are bolt-ons. So if you found this video useful please hit the like button and then follow the link to this video where you'll find a few more tips applicable to the Hornet chassis. Thanks for watching.